Samsung has just taken the curtains off the Galaxy S9 and the Galaxy S9 Plus. So we're going to have a quick chat about exactly what we think. Jess, top line thoughts, any good? Yeah, I think from what we've seen so far, uh, there are some small improvements over last year's Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. Those were both really beautiful phones. From the front, they look almost identical. The bezels have gotten ever so slightly thinner. You still have the very slightly curved screen. You still have this uh, edge toolbar on the side. Um, and it, it's, it's a really beautiful device. They both are. When you flip them around is when you start to see a difference. Uh, namely, the fingerprint scanner has moved from the side of the camera where it was impossibly awkward. Yeah, that was a real problem, to. wasn't it? It was a big problem for me, too, because my hands are a lot smaller than yours. So I felt like I was just like leaping across the phone in order to do that. Now Samsung has done what everybody else in the industry does and they've moved the fingerprint scanner to below the camera. Another big change you'll notice on the Galaxy S9 Plus, there are two camera modules here, not just one. So this is something that Samsung has done that kind of copies the iPhone um, technique, I guess, which is that the smallest version has a single lens, the medium version or the larger version of that has two thing. lenses, and then we expect that the Galaxy Note 9 will continue to keep its dual yeah. cameras. Because the Note 8 had dual, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I would say, you know, there are a couple enhancements under the hood as well. You'll see a faster chip uh, that could make the phones up to 25% faster uh, than last year's model and could also improve battery life yeah. on a single charge. That's the latest Qualcomm, the 845, I think it is. Yeah, so, so some regions will get the Snapdragon 845. Other regions will get Samsung's house-made Exynos processor, the latest sure. version. Um, but if it weren't for this beautiful purple color or this beautiful coral blue color that you have, uh, you know, if you had the two phones, black ones, side by side, if you're looking at the front, you might not really notice the difference. Between the between the old model, no, they, they are very similar. And I think that's fine because for me, the, the S8 was such a good looking phone that I don't really think Samsung needed to do a complete overhaul of the of the look of this phone yet. It, it, it's still got a little bit more milking to do of that design language. Um, certainly we've complained with other manufacturers like Apple who've kept on that same design year on year. It does get tiring, but this isn't the year to replace that just yet. Next year I might feel differently and if we don't get the S10 being something a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more exciting, then... Yeah, then it will start to feel a long a bit in the tooth. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, we have colors, so that jazz We have got new colors. Yeah, there is also black and gray, um, but these are my favorite. Yeah, They're don't definitely get the black really one. beautiful. It's boring. Stands out. Yeah, so uh, let's see, the difference between the S9 and the S9 Plus. Uh, well, bigger. yes, it's bigger. As you've noticed, we've got a 6.2 inch screen on here and a 5.8 inch display on this guy on the S9. Uh, cameras, so two of them on this guy. Yep. That means that you get the portrait mode. I and mean, then you get the telephoto uh, zoom lens as well if you want to get in on the action, but that's not uh, that's not reducing the quality. It's not like a digital zoom where you literally just crop into the right. image. You still get that full resolution. So that's and great. And that's a 212 megapixel camera, 12 megapixel camera, 8 megapixel front facing camera. Okay, so you've got screen space, you've got that second camera, you've got a larger battery capacity on there. Um, so I still it's reckon you'll probably get about a day. Yeah, it's still the same as last year's if you're keeping track. But uh, with the new chipset in there, you might get like a little bit more life out of it, but you're still gonna need to charge your phone every night, especially sure. if you're using it really heavily. Uh, and then also the price. So this is going to be, the S9 Plus is going to be more expensive than the S9. Yeah, I don't know, we don't, we don't know exact prices off the top of our heads. I think 739 pounds for the small one and 800 and something for the bigger one. So and it, it really varies. So in US currency, you're gonna have a hundred twenty dollar difference depending on which carrier you go to and that's just for the s9 or the s9 plus and um, so that's something you're definitely going to have to shop around but crucially i don't think there's any difference as far as i'm aware in the process of performance or the resolution of the standard camera so actually between the two phones whichever one you go for it's really down to what I think feels most comfortable in your hand. For me, I am used to having bigger phones, but I prefer the smaller size of the Galaxy S9. Like, I really like the size of the iPhone X. That's a lot smaller, and it just feels more comfortable to use in one hand. So my money would go for the smaller one, being happy that I'm not having to really compromise on performance there. How about you? Uh, well, I do like a portrait mode option. Is it worth the extra money? I mean, maybe. I also kind of feel like I want the option to have it. If I want to use it, I wouldn't want to be like, disappointed that I couldn't take those pictures. 
However, uh, you don't lose a lot of the core functionality. Samsung has upgraded the camera in both of these phones. They both get the same upgrades. Um, a really big part of this is something called dual aperture, and you are a big photo buff, so why don't you explain what that is? So, this is the first phone that actually has an aperture that will physically change. Now, that's something that you will see in uh, traditional DSLRs with, uh, with, with, with uh, professional lenses, where you can change the aperture. That's physically the size of the hole that lets the light in. And really what that means is, the bigger the hole, the more light can get into your sensor. And this one, you can change it between an f1.5, which is very here, wide. I'm doing it right here. You're doing it right now. The bigger that aperture lets in a lot of light, so this should be really good in low light. We have seen some examples already that Samsung has shown, but do look very impressive. But of course, they're taking those under optimal lab conditions, so we're going to have to reserve our judgment until we can sort of take this out into the field, maybe even around Barcelona, and see how it really performs at night time. Maybe we'll have to take it into a bar with some beers and see how it performs there. I think we're definitely going to have to do I that. I think that maybe might have to shit. happen. Yeah. So, you're never supposed to notice. If you go into pro mode, you can force this and you can change the setting. But the beauty is that it's supposed to be automatic so that when you do go into the bar or the dark environment or you're with your friends, that that will just happen very seamlessly and you won't even notice that you're getting better pictures. Another thing that Samsung did with the camera was that the company introduced super slow motion uh, video. So they already had slow motion video. Now it's even slower. It was before, uh, I think, uh, 240 frames a second. Uh, but now it shoots at 960 frames a second. So that takes, I think, about um, uh, two seconds of video. It's yeah, point two, 0.2 seconds, seconds. And it turns that into six, six seconds. seconds. So if you're slapping your friend in the face, throwing a cake on the floor, your dog is catching a ball, that'll happen super slowly. Very, very good for sharing with your friends and fun for YouTube, all that kind of thing. Um, what we don't know at the moment, I don't think, is the resolution that I, does that video. It's 720p it and is. it shows. So I did take several slow motion videos of myself. Uh, well, somebody took it of me and I watched them back and it does look grainier. You know, you're know, you not going to, it's it's for fun, it's for sharing. It's, it's not for not, pros, really. Exactly. And that's a shame because uh, last year Sony launched their XZ Premium, I believe it was, and that also had a 960 frame a second super slow mo, and that also did it in 720. So it would kind of be nice for Samsung to up the ante a little bit with a full HD option, maybe even higher. I mean, I think 4K will be pushing it, but certainly I think hitting that full HD mark on here would have been good. Um, Sony, I agree. Yeah, Sony's, the way Sony did it as well was very difficult to capture that moment of when you want the slow mo to happen. Um, I haven't tried Samsung's yet, but they have got a few features like an automatic mode, which should hopefully make it easier to get what you want in slow motion. So one other camera feature that I want to point out, this is brand new to the Galaxy S9, it's selfie focus. So oftentimes you get that portrait mode by having two cameras on the back, you only have one front facing camera, but the phones will actually use software to kind of simulate that focus. So I don't think I can get it close enough to the camera, <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is that your background will blur out and you and your friends will kind of pop out in sharp relief. And of course, that's not the only exciting thing that you can do with the front facing camera because Samsung has a little bit jumped on the Apple bandwagon oh, with yes. the um, AR emojis. Um, but what Samsung's done is when you take a selfie of, uh, of yourself, of course, uh, you can then, that will then be turned into a, an animated character of yourself, which will then talk as you're talking into it. And so you can use that to send us right. messages and do all kinds of things rather than it just being like Apple, a talking poo or a talking fox. It actually is supposed to look a bit like you, which is well, kind of a neat You can actually have that also uh, with a rabbit or Disney characters. Uh, there is an agreement with Disney. So AR emoji does two things. Uh, the first thing it does is it does create an avatar of yourself. Uh, then it kind of splits into two tracks. So you can stylize and edit that and, as Andy said, record a video, although it's creepy and doesn't work very well. Yeah. And I recorded some, I tried to smile, and instead of smiling, so I went like this, and it went eh. Sorts of grimaces, <laughs> it looks really like you're weird. in a lot of pain. Uh, the second thing, so, so you can share that with others, that shares in a movie file, and, and the other thing that it does is it will basically create 18 animated GIF stickers yeah. that you can send in messages, and those are pre-created. So when you set it up, you're not even smiling, you just kind of have a passport photo face where you stare at it, yeah. 
and then it creates those stickers and you can use them if you've ever used Bitmoji, it's like that. It's almost identical to Bitmoji actually and, and it, the, 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 my character that I created when I tried this looked almost identical to my Bitmoji character. And I really like using Bitmoji, sending all the different things, so I think this yeah, actually but you a feature... have like dozens of Bitmoji to choose from and you have 18 here. You have 18 at launch, but I'm sure that as it, as it, as it, as it takes off and people will start doing their own thing with it, and I imagine Samsung will probably release that, uh, that APK out to um, other developers who may start bringing that into things. I agree. So it could well be that we start seeing a lot more of these things. And certainly if Bitmoji themselves get a hold of the developer kit, they could actually bring that into Bitmoji proper. I think that would be fun. I have to say, right now, I'm not really hot on this feature from what I've seen so far. It's early days. There could be a lot of software improvements, but I just don't think the tracking is really good. I look at it. I don't think it looks like me. Other people have seen it. Other editors tried it. Their skin tone, their hair was totally off. Do you really want to sit there? I mean, you're supposed yeah. to have some sort of you know, identification with this character that's being created. That's what makes it personal. And I just feel like it it doesn't, doesn't really that. work, right? And, the, the, and what works with the emoji is that it tracks really well. So when you yeah. move your mouth, it moves. Yeah, the Here tracking is better, delay. much better on apples. Yeah. And, and do, do you think that makes this seem a bit like a, a Me Too gimmick? I do, I do feel that way. I think that the front-facing camera has a lot to do with it. The iPhone 10 that this is on um, has a 3D tracker yeah. in the camera. This is using 2D. So this is just a matter of generation. I think the Note uh, 9 or I think next year's Galaxy phones could improve just when that front-facing camera improves. The yep. technology is out there, but it's coming slower to Android phones. So some of the features that we do still have, though, it's still IP68 waterproof. Yes. So um, you can't, don't take it swimming, but it's safe if you get it splashed or if you take a phone call in the rain. Um, we've also got micro SD card expandable um, uh, for cards up to 400 gig in size. I mean, they're about 200 pounds or what, $300. So you might not want to buy one of those, but at least you can if you wanted to. So that's neat that we have still got that. And Samsung were very keen to point out that there is still a headphone jack on the oh, bottom yes. of this. So they haven't got rid of the headphone jack. Oh, wireless charging. Also a feature that you still see in here. Yeah. Of course you have Samsung Pay. I want to say something about uh, the speaker, which is next to the headphone jack, yeah. uh, which is what we saw. So Samsung has enhanced the audio for the S9 and the S9 Plus. You've got uh, the microphone at the bottom and a speaker up at the top. These are combined with a Dolby codec, so Dolby software, that you'll find uh, similar to what you might see in a Dolby cinema theater, and it creates richer, louder sound. Um, I thought it sounded really good in the demo. It sounded pretty rich, but I also don't think that that was difficult to attain compared to previous versions. Just speakerphone, audio through the speakers has never been a strong suit. So it's nice to see Samsung kind of come to the table what a lot of other phone makers have. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to kind of testing that out just for a battle of which phone has the best audio. Which one's loudest. Yeah. It's definitely, it's not going to be a feature. You're not going to use this music to, to power your party. For example, we've got some noise going on behind us. Um, but it's, it's loud enough that if you're listening to maybe a podcast while you're cooking your dinner exactly. or um, you want to show a friend a video yeah it's great for that but it but it's not it, it's, it isn't going to replace a good set of headphones or a good bluetooth speaker okay so we've gone over a lot of the main features i think the remaining question is how is this phone going to perform against some of the others that are out there the iphone 10 uh, the google pixel 2 and 2xl and other phones that are going to be coming down the line that are very high end what's your hot take i mean i think samsung has it's take the sa was already a very good phone and it all already held its own against those other phones. So it has taken that and added a little bit extra. So that's good. I think people are going to respond to that. I think this is going to, it's definitely going to sell well because it's a new Samsung Galaxy phone. They always sell well. So I think they're, they're definitely onto a winner here. For me, there isn't, it's not a huge jump over the S8. And certainly if you already have a Galaxy S8, there's no need to upgrade here. You can safely think, okay, this one is not for me. I'll wait till the, the S10 next year, or maybe even the Note 9 um, later on in the year. Um, it doesn't have that pizzazz of, of a, here's a new phone. I agree with you. And I also think that a lot of this is gonna come down to the camera. There are people who have older versions of Samsung phones or other phones, and they've been waiting to see, do I buy an iPhone or do I buy the next Galaxy? And I think that when we dive into that camera, when we dive into the speed, when we dive into battery life, the things that we haven't been able to test yet, uh, they take time and we don't even have the review units yet. But when we do that, I think that's going to really decide if this is the iPhone 10 killer or not.
when are these going to be on sale? Oh, right. So they go on pre-order March 2nd, and they go on store shelves March 16th. Yeah. So that means that by mid-March, you should be able to get your hands on one of these, and hopefully by then, we may have even been able to give one the full review treatment, because there is a lot of things that we want to test with this. So do, of course, make sure to hit any questions that we haven't covered uh, in the comments, or you can find us on Twitter. Jess, you are? At Jay Dalcourt. And I am at Battery HQ. And, of course, you can reach CNET with at CNET on pretty much every social channel you can find. All right, that's it for now.